the idea behind this is we want to keep this as plug and play as possible. So to keep things from being too complicated, what we're going to do is we're going to use extension cables to do a lot of the work. So here we can see we're using a Kato three-way extension. That is then plugged into a normal extension wire. If we follow that around, what we do is we clip off the end clip, strip, the, strip it down with the wire strippers, and insert that into the back of the Z21. So the only thing we're really changing here or modifying is just this extension cable right there. We're not actually we're not changing this part. We're just changing this. So when you strip off the ends of the wires, just make sure to twist them around to create a more solid connection and then screw that into the uh, the Roco connector and plug that into the back. So now that's going to give us the power to the track. So from there we can see that we're then going to have a wire running from here and it's going to go around and that's going to go into here which will be the feeder. Now if you notice there's actually room for another one to go in so that way if we want to put a feeder for another track or we can always just have another one of these things and that'll give us three more and so on and so forth. The idea is to just keep it all plug and play. Again, this is, you know, for if, if you want to do something more permanent, then yeah, okay, you can solder things. But this is just to make things quick and easy to, to put together and tear down. So now this one, we follow around, and that's going to go into the DS64. Same thing as with the power. We uh, clip off the end, you know, just using, you know, wire clippers. Clip off the, clip off the, you know, the it's going to look like this pretty much on the, on the back. We're just going to clip that off, strip the wires, twist them around. I mean, I have these tinned with solder also, but you don't, you really don't have to do that as long as it's as long as it's twisted and make a solid connection. Then we screw that in to the DS64. This way, the DS64 is getting track power. But the nice thing about it is, since that's coming just basically from here, which goes directly into the Z21, we're not going to get any of those issues of the power being being broken or you know any other weird stuff like as if this was being fed from the track itself if this was being fed from the track itself well then you know you get all kinds of weird horror stories about certain turnouts make it act wonky and everything but as it stands now there's nothing really you know to change the power coming from the back of the Z21 into the DS64 so Z21 provides power comes out follows around this then goes to the track this then goes to the DS64 so once again you know we can actually fill we can actually plug another track in right here if we wanted to doing the same thing or you know we can plug in another one of these and just keep on going now what I did uh, so so now if you notice what we what we've got here is here are where the turnouts are plugged in. Now we're doing the same thing with the turnouts. If we follow that around this, to this turnout right here, what I've done is, here's the original cable for the turnout itself, but then we have an extender, extension wire, that goes on, that comes around. We clipped off the end of the extension wire, tinned it, screwed that in. Same thing here, here's another one, that circles around, that goes over there to that turnout over there. Once again, you can see an extension. So see, the nice thing about all this is, is if we ever have to take this, this, you know, whenever, if we need to tear this down, because, you know, of course, this is sitting on the dining room table. If we need to tear this down, all we have to do to unplug it is just unplug it from the actual extensions. Unplug it here, unplug it here, and that's it. We don't have to keep unscrewing and screwing in these connections. They, this can stay. This stuff can stay permanently wired into this, and same as if we add other, you know, other turnouts later. We have, you know, two more here that we can add on to, and just the same thing. That way, from there on, this becomes a truly plug-and-play item. We don't have to worry about screwing and unscrewing each and every time. But this is really just to make it easy to set up and tear down very quickly. Um, you know, uh, for people who don't really have the space to 
be able to lay out, or in my case, I have the space, I just have a lot of stuff taking up that space, so for now I have to do, a, I'd have to do these kind of these fly-by-night kind of deals here. So, um, also one quick note, remember also that the Z21 adds four to the address number. So while this would be address one to the DS64, when you look this up on your Roco system, this is gonna be number five, this is going to be number six, this will be seven, this will be eight. Uh, just a word to remember that by because that's something that kind of throws people off. Another quick word is if you, my Z21 actually did come with a US power supply, if you happen to be in the US. Mine happened to come with a US power supply, but my uh, router did not. So for that, it still has the German power supply, but the router is, it does have, um, it, it can accept the power from a US power source. So all you need is just a simple adapter. So if you just get a simple German to US adapter, that'll work. It won't explode or blow up or anything um, because it actually is set up to be able to adjust to the US power standard. To prepare the Kato number four turnout for DCC, just simply uh, reverse the screws from how they're shipped to the position opposite from where they were. So basically what we're doing is, is we are making the power non-routing. That way, no matter what, the power flows where it needs to go. So this is turnout number five. And then up here is what I have on this will be turnout number six, which should be the left-hand turnout. But you'll notice that the screws are located basically in the position opposite of how the switches come, of how the turnouts come shipped. So just simply do the same thing I've done here with the screws, and this will make these turnouts DCC compatible. Okay, so we have the Z21 app loaded up. We've got everything going here, so we can control. Once again, um, the Z21 can app or controller will add four to the address. So for switch number one, it actually becomes switch number five. Switch number two becomes switch number six, it turn out. But if you if we go here and we click it, the switch itself will actually throw. Same for the switch up there. And we will get our locomotive going, our BR221. Get it going around the track. So everything's Good to go as is. Um, so we'll bring it down to a little bit of a of a crawl here, and then we'll select the RS3, throw a switch five, get the RS3 going, and so what we can do is we can get. Get these guys going through here. We're going to reselect the BR221. We will then throw this turnout, back this in, and stop. Get that going again. And so uh, because the, the, the switches are, the turnouts are non-power routing, uh, as shown, the um, the power is going through through to the tracks, to the rails, no matter what. Now, if we wanted to do an internal uh, loop inside of this, that these that these uh, that these would actually be these turnouts would actually be activating. What we could do is we could actually get one of these, an added feeder, and run that up to our splitter up here. But right now, we don't need to do anything like that. Um, in fact, since the things are non-power routing, we really don't have to do that anyway, but just a good option to make sure that there's power going all around. So, what we'll do is, is last but not least, we'll bring down, we'll activate the F7A, and throw its turnout. There we go. Now we 
We've got everybody rolling along. We'll throw the turnout here. Get the RS3 routed in there. Stop that. Rethrow it to keep the, the circle going. Oops. And go back to the F7A. And that's it. So this is all very easy to control um, just by using the screen. So of course, there's other videos that that explain how to how to you know how to set up all of this kind of stuff, um, assigning assigning switch address uh, turnout addresses and things like that. Um, you know, we can turn on the lights on and off for everything, and um, as we bring it around, we'll be able to see. The deadlight is in fact on, turn that off and on. Um, but other videos can take care of this kind of stuff. Again, the point behind this video is really just to show how to make a plug and play, uh, easy to set up and tear down layouts. That way, if, 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 it, if you want to do something uh, portable and fast, you know, uh, an added bonus to this is it's, it's easy for kids to do too because that way you don't have to worry about stripping down wires and everything. Once you do it that one time, since it's all plug and play, they can plug and unplug. Everything's color coded, and uh, and that's that. So hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe, and see you next time.